<clears throat> Greetings, Doombots. Tony Scangilli here with another pre-global launch video with some tips and tricks on Club Conquest. Now, a lot of you guys get in this game at the beginning, day one. You're going to see this tiny little note at the bottom right over here called Club Conquest and be like, what is that? Why can't I join it yet? What's going on? Basically, Club Conquest is this game's PvP almost warlike strategy game. I use PvP very loosely. You and two other clubs kind of play a weird game of Chinese checkers where you take control of nodes and the nodes power them up. And I'm just gonna go right in and let you see it. Now right now we are in a regroup phase and we're in a pretty tight matchup right now as you can see. Uh, we're about 6,000 points below which is not as much as, as you would think. Uh, we're not down by that much as you can see someone is way out of the fight but we're, we're close enough that it's still possible so <clears throat> the core of it is there are three separate clubs one two and three and you can kind of tell where they go you know left top right and you accrue points by maintaining nodes uh, these nodes can be defended by up to five teams each uh, all nodes and you fight your opposing teams and try to take the node to increase this chain, the total count of nodes you own and the number of points you get per minute. As a rule, you get one point per node you have, but when you control 13 or more nodes, so the second you take one additional node from your starting 12, uh, you get a bonus 10 points. So if you look at it right now, uh, we would be accruing 24 points based on uh, our, our node structure uh, for where we are. And House of Canada would probably be accruing 27 points because we have over 13. As I said, right now we are in the regroup stage where no one's attacking or gaining points. So we're just gonna relax for another three hours and 52 minutes. Uh, the, the couple of tips and tricks I wanna start and, and discuss to get you into this game mode as fast as possible are really simple. The first is about teams. Now, during and uh, pre every conquest, you have the opportunity to set teams. Now, some people set the same teams they would use on offense as they use on defense. I do not, and I don't recommend doing that. I recommend keeping them separate, making sure you have teams that work very well as an offensive team and teams that work very well as a defensive team. For example, I'm using the Lion King characters with Sully and Ariel as one of my defense teams, but on offense, I use the Lion King characters with two other Wilds characters, we'll say Mordu and Merida, or Hopper to take advantage of different teams. You don't have to use the same types of teams or the same five character teams, or even you know three character teams on both sides of the war. The teams you set for defense are not necessarily the teams you're going to use on offense. So keep that in mind when you're creating teams. The other thing you'll notice is I have a couple of teams that are really low powered and weak. And that's because as you start the game, you're not gonna have enough time or resources to invest in everything you see. And if you try to, if you see my other videos, you're going to have a bad time. It's about focusing on key important characters early, bringing them up and then working on the next team or whatever event happens to be going on at the time. You don't want to spread yourself too thin in this game. So you'll see that I have one somewhat decent defense team. Not great, not good. It's really just about its power. I have a couple of very low power teams and I have one relatively solid team. I also can go ahead right now and place uh, another defense team. So here we go. Just just get that out of the way. And we have this team set as one of my defense teams. Now I can still use these characters in a different order on offense. I can use one or two of them. I could split them up into two or three different teams. I just wanted to make sure that I have access to another team that can be placed on defense with a pretty high power for taking a node or for protecting a node. And we'll get into that next. So just remember, tip one, make sure you have defense teams that are good at defending or teams that are kind of hard to beat based on how you've set them up. It doesn't, they don't all have to be amazing, 
but make sure you have uh, a good separation and they don't have to be the same as your offense teams. You can set those up as you go. Once one of your defense teams is defeated, you can never use it for defense again. And once you use an offense team, you can never use those characters again. So just keep that in mind. The second thing uh, to kind of discuss is about point strategy. Now, as we've said, uh, you gain points equal to one per node uh, with a bonus 10 points when you reach over 13. So right now we have 14 points. If we were accruing points, we'd be at 24. If we move forward, uh, you'll see that these lines are represent our direct point value. So if we were to take these two nodes away from House of Canada, uh, that would create a break in their lines, the lines that they see. And these three nodes that they have would not be counting towards the, the total number of points they get per turn. So if we take these two nodes out, they would go from 17 minus two to 15 minus three extra points. So they'd be at 12. They would uh, have control of 12, 13, 14, 15 nodes, and that would allow them the extra 10 points. They'd be getting 22 points a turn, but because these nodes were not connected to their base, they would have absolutely no way of, of connecting the line path that you see here, and we would eventually overtake them in points per minute because our total would then be 16 plus 10, 26. You see how it works? Kind of follow me? Uh, it's all about making sure the lines come up. Another strategy uh, and you can kind of see where people work on or what these guys were working towards is, uh, as we've said, the lines are the points you get. So if you are able to take out a, a all three of these nodes in front of a team, like one, two, and three, this team, no matter how many points, how many nodes they have, will have no light paths, no chains back to their base. So they'd be getting zero points. The most they can get uh, would be a total of 10 points if they controlled every single node on the map except the three nodes before their base. You can only attack a node that is connected based on your light path. So right now we can attack, well, we can't attack anything right now, but when the war starts again, we can attack A11, which is currently marked. We can attack... Uh, C10, C11, C12, you can kind of see any node that's connected to a, a light path that we have. You can kind of trace the lines and figure it out. We couldn't necessarily jump past the node. For example, we couldn't fight A12 right now because A11 is in the way and we don't have a direct line. And in the same way, uh, they can't necessarily attack our base. So you can't jump straight to those high impact nodes. You have to make the path. Obviously, in the early stages of this game, Wonderland's Finest were eliminated. They're still accruing some number of points during normal wartime, but not enough that's going to allow them to overtake us. So in general, that's a uh, great second tip. The strategy is not just try to take as many nodes. That's a mistake. Um, a lot of people believe that to be the way to win the war. And unless you're strong enough to know that every node you take will never be taken back by your opponent, which is, let's be honest, a little arrogant. So the strategy should never be to take all of the nodes. The strategy should be to take nodes from your opponents and cut them off from their point chain. As we've said, we are going to take these two nodes next, which is going to cut them off from the chain, and hopefully we can defend these nodes with the teams we have left well enough that they will not be able to overcome then we just wait however many minutes it takes to overtake them like i said we kept this close enough that we still might win this uh, and the last point is about defending now as i've just said the worst the best thing you can do to win and the worst thing that can happen to you is if you are cut off from all of your nodes as a result you have to make decisions as to how you defend a lot of times you can put, as some people will do, their strongest defenses in the first five nodes, which is absolutely possible. I don't like that, though. Uh, I like the idea of having one or two incredibly strong teams on 
key nodes, and then, as you saw with my teams, one or two time waster teams. Now, as your rosters get wider, you can definitely place more and stronger teams on defense, but since this game is, is uh, multiple fronts, you're fighting two people, and it's about who has which nodes and who's taking control of chains, it's really important that your defenses are very, very, very good, and uh, as we've said, House of Canada is ahead right now, and if we want to win this war, not only do we have to cut them off at the pass, we have to make sure that these chains that you see right here are protected. We can't do anything for the nodes that have been attacked already, these ones that are on fire, this one's a little smoky, so is this one. We can't do much about those. What we can do is place our some of our strongest defenses in these to make sure that these nodes right here are maximizing their value to make sure that they're not getting any extra points from them and then if we need to we can go ahead and take these nodes to add our score we have a strategy that i think is is going to work for a lot of people which take the bare minimum you need to get ahead and defend those nodes and counter attack where it's necessary that's why we've been able to do so so well in the wars we've been facing and we're only been playing this game for about two months so I imagine it'll be very similar in the future. So the third tip is knowing when to defend and how to defend, uh, basing your current resources of, of course, 40 to 50 players, how they place their teams, and allowing choosing the correct targets and knowing what to do. So the top three tips that I can give to you, just to recap right now, tip one, set defense teams that you believe will be better on defense and keep teams for offense a little bit separate. They count differently, so you don't have to lock one team in on both sides, keep that in mind. Number two, keep track of which nodes you're taking and how to counter what your opponents are doing by cutting them off of their light paths that are very relevant. And number three, defend the nodes that you believe to be the most important and take uh, as much as you can to uh, avoid overexerting or, or over committing to a path that will lead you to ruin. Now again, I'm not confident we're going to win this club conquest, but it's it's very possible we have not been eliminated yet and as long as when four hours pass and we come back in, we can take these two nodes relatively quickly as a club, we will 100% place ourselves in a great position as long as we can defend not only these two, but of course, this node. Once these two are defended that they can't take them back, we can defend or try to defend A10, which will prevent them from cutting us off of the light path. Hopefully that was a little bit helpful. Uh, I have a clip uh, from earlier where I did take this node for us to show you what the light path looked like before and after and how it did change our, our node count. So. Hopefully that's very helpful, and if you have any questions about Club Conquest, feel free to comment below or stop by my stream and ask. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Skinjili, and I'll catch you later. Check the clip out. Cool, we did it. <laughs> that was a little dicey there for a second, but I obviously fast forwarded it a little bit so you can just kind of see it, but that's that's the idea. So you're you're basically playing your version of a uh, sorcerer's tournament fight against the defense team. So you just need to know how to counter. And if you want questions uh, or comments about why I chose the team, I specifically chose to beat them, knowing that I'd be able to punch up uh, into a stronger team, feel free to comment below and let me know.